Hey everybody, Chris Gill here, and today we are talking about automation. There are a couple of tricks inside Studio One that make automation super easy, and I want to show one of those to you today. Let's take a look. So we have this track right here. It's just kind of a 12-bar blues uh, vibe, and uh, what I needed to have happen was I needed to automate some of the volume levels on this so that they weren't uh, completely stepping on the toes of the other track. So let's, let's give a listen to this and see exactly what I mean. Start talking about true love, started talking about sin. I said, honey, I live with you for the rest of my life. All right, so what we've got going on here is a fairly complex part of this song where and there's a, the verse happening and the vocals are happening and they're kind of down low. Uh, and we've just got kind of like the band doing these like little mm, bop, bop, kind of hits like filling in the gaps, right? But they're still just a little too heavy. I have already written some automation for this guitar track here but I have not written any automation for this track here. And instead of just writing separate automation, what needs to happen is I need both of those guitars to come down. Well, instead of having to rewrite automation for this and write automation for this, there's a very easy way to quickly write automation for both tracks. I wanna show that to you now. So if you grab both of these tracks, so select one and then using your command key, select the other, and you right click in this area here, we can add a VCA for select channels. Now what this does is it moves these two faders here in, in, a, in relative level to each other. So it doesn't move them up and down the same amount as this one increases, this one moves slowly, and as you approach zero, they'll both hit zero at the same time. Let me, let me show you real quickly what I mean. So uh, let's make this much taller so we can really see this effect. So as I move these, the gap becomes less and they are going to hit zero at the same time, right? And as I move them, they're gonna get further apart. So hopefully that, that's pretty easy for you to see. Let's put that back to zero. Um, and that's that's the gist of creating a VCA is that they move uh, in relative volume to each other. It's not just a, um, it's not a bus where you turn it up and they all turn up equally. They're, they're turning up and down in, in relation to each other. So I need to write some automation that turns both of those guitars down in relation to each other. So here's the easiest way to do this. So we've, we've created this fader, we've created this VCA. What we're going to do is we're gonna put the automation mode into touch mode. And uh, the reason we wanna put this into touch mode, what touch allows us to do is if we move these faders, uh, and I believe it has to be playing, if you move this fader, it's going to, when you release it, pop back to the position it was uh, before you started touching it. And that's handy because that allows you to get back to the level you were at. Now in this case, we know we need to get back to zero. So it's, it's not a huge issue, uh, but let's watch what happens here uh, as we approach this part of the song and how I write this automation. All right, so right there on that bow, I was able to release that fader, and, that, and that's why it kind of snapped up to that position. I, I basically, I was holding down on the mouse, and as soon as I let up on that, that fader kind of popped back to zero. So, this one fader is controlling both. That's great, but now I don't want to have this VCA fader just hanging out in my mix forever controlling this. So, what I can do is, and let's put, let's view both of these, uh, let's view both of these, let's see, there we go. Okay, so now we're viewing all the automation we've written for the track. So, uh, this is a little bit hard to see, but hopefully you can see this. So we've written a little bit of automation here for this bus, right? And now we've written none for this. So what you're seeing here, this light gray line here and here is this automation curve. So it's showing you that even though we have actual automation written to this, this automation is happening in conjunction. So what we can now do is right click either here or down here, right click on this, or if you're on a Mac, uh, control click, and you can say merge VCA automation. Now watch what this is gonna do it has now applied that automation to this track. Why is this important? Now we can clean up our mix by removing this. And not only did this just apply that VCA automation to this track that already had automation, it actually made up the difference. So if we look here, these automation curves are slightly different. Uh, we're, we're seeing a little bit of a dip here where there is none here. So it didn't just replace the automation, it actually did some magical math in the background and uh, applied both automation curves simultaneously. 
Now we have a nice clean mix without an extra VCA fader in it. Um, and we can, let's take this out of movement. And now let's watch the faders as we approach this section. That is a great way to control multiple faders or add uh, automation to multiple tracks even if you already have a track that has some automation written to it. Again, my name's Chris Gill. If you found this helpful, uh, please hit the like video, subscribe to the channel. We've got much more of these coming up and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.